I was born Kevin from Hershey, Pennsylvania. A delicious piece of chocolate. Hi, I'm Sherry Vine. My real name is Keith Levy, and I'm blonde. Got into drag because I was getting my master's degree at USC, and one of the projects required us to do Streetcar Named Desire. I was like, oh, well, Blanche is the good part. <laughs> I'm Acid Betty. I get a lot of shit, a lot of drag queens um, call me the ugly one, the strange one, um, the whatever. Um, they don't consider me a drag queen. I celebrated a year anniversary in drag um, last week. I am who I am and you gotta accept me for who I am and I don't care what you think. I had people throw things at me in school, push me against the locker, pull me up on my neck and literally hoist me off the ground. Yeah. Honey. I've been doing drag for three years. I've been named Entertainer of the Year, Newcomer of the Year, Breakthrough Artist. I might be young, but I'm obviously talented, and if you have something to say about it, watch your back. I'm ready to have someone to call my own. My last serious relationship was with Epiphany, and that just ended in fucking disaster. I think maybe I'm even setting myself up for failure, because I've always just wanted a white picket fence and a husband. Western culture and American culture is inherently misogynistic and it amazes me that we believe that for a woman to be more feminine she has to put more things on top of herself. I don't have breasts. I don't have a vagina. So let's bring our next gal to the stage. She's a lovely gal that I met about 20 years ago in rehab. She's a fetus and she's here with us tonight. So let's welcome the lovely styling, and I use the term loosely, like her asshole. <laughs> People are coming to see you, your name and your this, but every night you have to prove that you deserve to be there, you know, because you're a man in a wig, you're a fucking clown. Balls and pantyhose, that's probably the most uncomfortable thing. Okay, one. My whole belief about talent is, if you're truly talented, you could just stand there and open your mouth and people listen. It's those girls that move around a lot you gotta watch out for. I don't really seek anyone's approval because I I, I don't need it. You know, I, I know I'm fabulous. I'm good at what I do and I'm, I'm proud of that. I think ultimately I would love for my dad to just totally accept it. Yeah, Pee Girls, you know you better wash out or guys are never gonna eat out. towards other drag queens, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where I became RuPaul's roommate. I'm eccentric, I'm bawdy, you know, I'm, I'm zany, that's me. Buddy? Yes, head up your ass. I love bathroom humor though, really. I just want to flush Bonnie down the toilet. You were monopolizing the entire day. There's five or six other girls who wanted time, and you wouldn't shut your fucking trap. Other Is it my there? fault if the cameras want to focus on someone who's fucking entertaining? I'm surprised to see them both in the same room, or actually a room that can accommodate the size of those two bitches. You are the one that's known as the bitch by every queen in this fucking city. I'm not. I don't think she's a bitch. I just don't know if I completely trust her. I'm the one that organized Wigstock that brought all the fucking bitches together for not one cent. Because she was a part of the New York drag scene, I wanted to include her in Wigstock because I don't have to like it, I wanted to be fair. You're the one that the year that we didn't have Wigstock fucking took it to the park and tried to wrench the goddamn festival away from, away from me. I did not try to wrench the goddamn you. There ain't no more goddamn wig stock and these stupid cunts are still fighting. You took my thunder, you took my thunder. You're both old bitches, you're reduced to doing cruise ships at this point. Lighten the fuck up. Her anger wasn't about me. It was about her frustration with her life. She sees someone like myself who still has bone structure and it reminds her of the past. And we're, we're talking, talking about, about today. Pa past perception, stick today. around. Yeah, and I, I know that you're a I said what I had to Good. say. Good. I spoke my piece of mind.
I'm gonna go. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Maybe we'll meet in the middle. Maybe we won't. Yes. All right, lady ugly. Lady fucking ugly. You know what, honey? You're yeah, fat just, and just you're fat. You're fat and you're ugly. Uh, don't you spit your one good tooth at me, bitch. If you're worried about the camera spending up too much time on me, do something interesting, Hedda. It's best to keep your enemies close to you, if you know what I mean. I've also learned that most recently. So, Bunny, we're going to be the best of friends. Stephen and I get together every so often. I visit him in the city which is a big deal for me now since I'm retired. He talks about his act, we go over some of his jokes, some of them are hysterical, some of them to me fall flat, but he's in a different world. I mean, we're talking about generational differences here. That was the worst joke, that wasn't my joke, the one joke that I told I you I love that one. What makes Martha Stewart scream twice? I love that one. Fuckering yeah. up the ass and wiping your dick on her curtain? Yeah. That is not my joke. Oh, I didn't know it was, that. It's a yeah. good joke, but I say it better than most people, so yeah. they think it's new and fresh. Well, it's a mom and dad who love their son. I don't understand why it isn't universal. It's just when I, when I hear about kids that are thrown out of their homes and, and the waste of, 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 of a human being, for what? We're going to be gone and they're going to be living their lives and we have no right to tell them how to live. It's, it's not a choice. So I live here in Queens in my glamorously large apartment. Tonight I have a show at Barracuda um, and every night before I get ready I go to my closet, I pick out what I'm going to wear, pick out the shoes and the hair and everything. I have one of the biggest closets. I think it's the biggest closet out of all the queens. I'm very nervous. My dad is coming today. Um, he hasn't been here in a while. Uh, he, last time he was here, he actually built the closet with me. He came down specifically to do it. I didn't tell him what it was for. Don't know if I'm gonna show it to him because I'm nervous whether or not I want him to see what's inside. So we haven't really talked about the gay thing, let alone the drag thing. So. Um, I'm not sure it's a conversation I want to have. Hey! <laughs> how you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? Yeah, okay. You know, how's, how's the drive? It's alright, a little long, you know, but uh, traffic a little here and there, you know. Yeah. Oh, doesn't look like you did too much here. Well, you know, I've been busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I've spent a long time uh, over the last, you know, uh, eight years trying to rebuild a relationship with my dad, and it's been a long um, a long journey to get here and you know like with my daddy always tries to do the right thing he, he doesn't always do the right thing but he always tries to and uh, you know now that this has happened I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit of a setback and um, you know I don't know I don't know what's going to happen so um, I'm just Um, that guy Dennis came up and started talking to me and I had I didn't know that he and Logan had gone on a date the day before. When you're a queen, it's hard to hold on to a good man. Because you are sitting with the guy that I went on a date with last night, and it's rare that I finally find someone that can deal with me and drag. You were at this event. No, 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 listen. No, listen. Just, no, listen. Scott moved in with me. He's a sweetheart. He's such a sweetheart. Uh, he came up to me. I didn't even go up to him. He came up to me. A little more, a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm about to release an album. I'm sitting here trying to work on bills and we're about to get foreclosed on and lose this place. No, you listen, 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 listen. No, listen. please listen. We're about to lose this place and I am trying to take care of you. If he doesn't step up, he's gonna be out on the street. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid to push you. I'm not afraid to hit you. People say that she may have a crush on me and that's where some of the frustration comes from in the, in the conflict between us. If you're ugly, I'm gonna say hey Dallas. If you're ugly. She um she dated Epiphany. And Epiphany's a drag queen, so maybe she does like drag queens. Logan has very little capacity um, for 
being loved. All of a sudden, Bianca Del Rio decided to have a powwow with us, and Epiphany hugged me. I'll always love Logan. That makes me nervous because I can't tell if she's being fake or real. I saw your fucking lipstick all over that boy's face. I wish I was a cab driver so I could just hit her when I see her in the middle of the street. <laughs> all over, all over like this. When I saw Logan there, um, it actually made me think about it again. And perhaps, perhaps there is something there. I don't know how to tell. How to tell. Who knows what the future holds with me and Epiphany. I'll probably hit her, she'll probably hit me. At the end of the day, we'll hug and go home together. Acid Betty has probably the most consistent and honest window into my life, I think, right now that anybody has. We are the two newest um, drag queens who not only go out um, and party, and socialize and get all the boys to like us and want to come out with us, but also we do the craft probably the best. Half of me thinks like I should just end it, like, stop doing drag and go like into sociology or something, and the other half thinks like you want to maybe I should school? just, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not the dumbest person in the world. But you don't finish it. See, but that's the thing is that I spend all my time doing my hair and making myself look pretty. It takes a second. And then what happened is Epiphany and I learned that we are the perfect team. She's gorgeous, and people just love her when she smiles, and I'm that artistic, crazy person that maybe they don't want to talk to, but they want at their parties because they want me at their parties. Drag is an escape for most people, and that escape that initially started with me became the reason for why I am so confident now in myself. I love what I get to do and I love the advantages that come with it. You know, I get to drink free, get to go here, get to do this. It's theatrical for me and it's a character and it's really fun and that's why I do drag. And it started as a joke, it turned into a career and it's a joke again. I'm about to release my first album, which I'm really excited about. And if you're anywhere, Outside of New York, watch out, because I'm coming. We are sisters. We're sisters of the cloth and sisters of the nightlife. And, um, you know, that bond will always be there. We pass the torch down to the new queens as we have taken them from the older queens. A drag queen is someone who does it for entertainment purposes only. Once they're off that stage, they whip off the maquillage, throw the fur into the corner, and they go out in the streets with just a little moisturizer on and lead a normal, happy, and safe life. Would I like to see it go further? Of course. But you know what? I'm working on that. Maybe it will never happen for me. But you know what? Even if it doesn't, I'm happy.